In this video, I will show you how to create an overlapping rectangles area graph using Charticulator. We start with the CSV file that is created from the Excel template file I explained in a previous video. This video is part of the Creating Area Graphs in Charticulator playlist. The introduction video in the playlist will give you an overview of the different videos in this playlist. Start by going to charticulator.com in a browser. Then click on the Launch Charticulator button. You will see the new visual page. Notice in the privacy note down here, the data remains only on your machine and, not, and is not shared with Microsoft. So one of the advantages of the Charticulator tool is that it may allow to, you to use this tool with corporate data without violating your data privacy rules but please check with your data privacy policy or advisor to make sure. To import the CSV file, we click on the open button, and then we can select the CSV file that we saved in the previous step. Select the CSV and click on open. You'll notice that you see a preview of the data table. Make sure that this is the data table that you wanted to import, make sure it is correct. And if it is, click on the done button to confirm the data is correct and now it is imported. So now we see the uh, tool to create our visual and we have to start by adding a glyph. So the glyphs are here. I'm going to click on the rectangle glyph and I'm going to drag it down to the glyph panel. Now it adds it but now we need to tell it well how large should each of these shapes be and that's going to be determined by our width and height. So we're going to draw our width value to the bottom and we're going to drag our height to the side because that defines. And you'll notice that we have our shapes and it's arranged them side by side, but we wanted them overlapping. We'll get to that in just a couple of minutes. So before we start that, I want to talk about the title. So the title, click on the title in the layers here under chart and down, uh, scroll down is the title attributes. And you'll notice it takes the name from the file name that you imported. So that may or may not be meaningful to you. In this case, this was a, a marketing campaign. So I'm gonna type in marketing campaign results. And when I hit enter, you'll notice it changes. There are also other attributes, uh, size, the font, uh, how it's aligned, those sorts of things if you really wanna change those. What we want to do is to change the organization of the visual, we're going to go to our plot segment under chart, plot segment layer. Now here's where we do the layout. So you'll notice the type here right now is set as stack X, but the first one here is overlap. And when I click on overlap, it overlaps the rectangles on top of each other. Now you can't see that because they're all the same color and there's no outline color. We'll get to that in a few moments, but this allows you to have the overlapping. You'll also notice here the alignment. The alignment is how are they organized? So currently it's left and bottom, which means the smallest rectangle is down here. And you'll notice when I put my cursor over, you can see those rectangles. But you could align them if you wanted them top. You could align them here to the top. If you wanted them to the right, you can do that. So you have options on how the alignment is done. But we want to add an outline around each of these rectangle so we can actually see them when they're overlapped. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the shape one in the glyph and we're going to scroll down to the style and you'll notice the fill color is set. That's okay. We'll change that in PowerPoint anyways, but the stroke, that is actually what uh, this uses in terms of stroke. That's the outline color. So you'll notice it says none right now, but we can click on it and we can select one. So for example, if uh, I want to select uh, white as the outline color and uh, the width of the line instead of one to make it, let's say two. Um, you'll notice now I can see each of those shapes in the area graph because I've added that outline and I've made it a little thicker. So that's how we can add an outline, at least so we can see the shapes. Now, again, we can modify those attributes in terms of the fill and the stroke color in PowerPoint after we import it, but at least now we know it looks like what we wanted it to look like. So the uh, next thing we want to do is to add text to the shapes. So 
I'm going to click on the text icon and I'm going to drag it to the glyph area. And you'll see that it puts it in, but it puts in the default, which is just the word text because it doesn't know what else to, to put in there. So in our attributes section, I'm going to, need to scroll up and you'll see here's text, just saying text. But what we can do is we can drag one of these items, the label, for example, I'm going to drag it down to this area. And you'll notice when I move it over, it says drop here to map data. So I'm going to release my mouse button, drop it there. And here are the labels. Now you'll notice the labels are not positioned where you think they should be. You think they should be in the middle uh, of the area that's not overlapping, but that's not actually true. The alignment here is to be in the middle of the glyph. We'll change this in PowerPoint, but right now it's really about getting the correct text in here. So the label is here. If we want to add the value as well, how do we do that? Well, a Charticulator doesn't allow you to add more than one item in this space. So what we do is, is we do a bit of a trick. So I'm going to click into this text area. It selects all of that. I'm going to hit Control C to copy it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the value to this area. You notice it replaces it. But again, we've got that code for the label copied. So I'm going to click into this again. I'm going to go to the front, the start of that code, and I'm going to hit Control V to paste in the code that I had copied earlier. I'm going to add a colon and a space. And then when I hit Enter, now you'll notice it updates. So um, the code is what controls it. The dragging only adds one, but you can control the code. The other thing you control in the code is the number of decimal places. So right at the end here, you see it says decimal one F. One is the number of decimal places. So if I don't need any decimal places, in this case I don't, decimal places don't, don't mean anything here, I can change the one to a zero. And when I hit enter, it updates what I'm seeing. So now I have the text, I have the shapes outlined so I can see them. And it all makes sense in terms of the shapes that I have in this particular overlapping rectangle area graph. There are other formatting options for the text as well in terms of, again, the font and the size if you wanted to change those. But again, those are easily changed in PowerPoint after we bring that in. So once we've got the area graph the way we want it in Charticulator, we can export it. The export button is here up at the top. We click on it and it says, how would you like to export it? Export it as an image. And what we want is we want SVG. Now, it, for those of you who are using PowerPoint versions that do not accept SVG images, you may be having to export it then as a JPEG or a PNG. In those cases, I would suggest not adding text because the JPEG and PNG uh, options do not allow you to break it apart in PowerPoint. So in that case, just export it as a a JPEG or a ping with no text, you also will not be able to change the colors of each of the shapes. So it is much more limiting. That's why the SVG is the recommended option if your PowerPoint version can take that. So I'll click on SVG and you'll notice it just immediately downloads the file to our default browser download location and it makes it available here. Now, obviously you'll then move that to where it is that you wanna use it, but it's now been downloaded to your computer as an SVG. If this is a visual that you want to save later on, we can go to our back arrow and we can use our save button up at the top here. We simply give it a name and click save to my charts. Then what it does is it saves it locally, again, only on your computer, not on Microsoft servers. And then in the new screen for a new visual, instead we could click on open and it will list all of the saved visuals that we have. What you've done now is created the overlapping rectangle area graph in Charticulator and downloaded the SVG image ready to import into PowerPoint. If you found this video helpful, there are three things you can do to help me out. First, click the like button below the video on YouTube. Second, leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And third, subscribe to my channel. Check out my websites and other videos with more tips and advice. Thanks again for watching.